Hello, Ukraine. <laughs> Come on down to Thunder Bay, Ontario, Canada. Uh, hi, my name is Danny, Danny Greer. Um, aircraft maintenance program here at Confederation College. I'm one of the professors in the program, also a program coordinator for the entire program. So where are you right now? Is it the lab or your office? What is it? Yeah, no, this is uh, my uh, turbine engine lab. So I teach turbine engines uh, first year and second year. Um, so I'm just in the shop right now. And so the second year students uh, right now, they've been in the shop this week doing some of their projects and the engine you kind of see behind me there, the, it's one of the projects they do where they split the engine in half, they separate it, take all the parts out, inspect it. It's called a hot section inspection. It's one of the biggest, bigger projects they do and it's uh, um, one of those things where you get to take the engine all apart and figure out what all the parts are called and inspect them and then hopefully by the end of next week, uh, it's all back together again. Yeah, they, we start off uh, first year, um, we start off more in a sort of like a shop environment, learning safety, uh, learning their tools, uh, learning how to get to school on time and be ready to work on time to get them ready to work in the aviation world. <clears throat> and then um, as we go through the years and semesters, uh, we let them get into the hangar and work on airplanes and helicopters and electrical and there's some sheet metal and um, so they do all, all sorts of parts. And in this shop right here, it's probably hard to see with the light, but it's not the biggest shop, but I have, I'm attached to the hangar. Mm -hmm. So our hangar is just over my shoulder here and there's a class in there right now doing some airframe projects. So they're doing different things out on the helicopters and the airplanes. And so how many students typically um, are in the group? Okay, so Nora, we would love to see about 50, 54 students come in every fall. Um, we don't get that. Um, uh, every year it varies. With COVID times, uh, it was a pretty low number last year. So we have not very many students that, um, currently in the program. But normally we're looking at first year, we're looking at everybody's in one theory class, whether we're in person um, from before COVID times or now we're online. So uh, it's whatever up to 54 is the largest we would take in. So then we break them into uh, usually three groups for shop. So if we have um, somewhere around 15, 16 in mm -hmm. first semester shops. Are there many international students in the groups on this particular yeah. program? Yeah, every year it varies, but if I bet you if you did a survey and looked at all the numbers, we're probably the last several years were probably about 40 to 45, 46 percent of the students are international in the whole. And that's from from everywhere. The majority right now, uh, India, India, China, Korea are pretty popular. We've had um, some from Vietnam, some from uh, just we get some one off countries mm -hmm. in there. And we've had. We just had one graduate last year. He, he was Ukrainian background, so. Mm -hmm. After finishing this program, whom they, the students can become? From before, before COVID times, uh, aviation was booming. Like it was unbelievable, the amount of jobs that were out there for all aspects of aviation. So the hope is that returns at some point in time. We just don't know exactly when that's going to return. Um, some companies are still hiring. Uh, we just had one company that's not that far away from our city and they're, they need people. They, they need lots mm -hmm. of people. So each company has its own way of doing business. So the airlines are not that busy, right? They're not flying that much. But some of the other companies that do repair work and do cargo hauling and stuff, they're really busy. Um, so there are still jobs out there right now. We just had um, students get hired just a couple of weeks ago from last year's group. Um, so the big change for our program is um, we have a mandatory co-op now, so mm -hmm. co-op education. So after the first year, it's designed to be to allow the students to get out there and work between first year and second year. That's right. normally where you'd have a summer off from school. Mm -hmm. Most students have to work anyways to earn some money to pay for school. So 
we started that <clears throat> this past fall. And uh, so <clears throat> the idea is to have the employers hire them for the summer. It's a 420 hour co-op. So that's not quite the entire summer, but it's pretty mm -hmm. close. It's a paid position. So they would earn money. They would get experience. They would earn their co-op requirement or credit. Mm -hmm. And then they can also earn in Canada, they would earn time towards their AME license. So that's a four year process, the AME license. So that from the school perspective, uh, if you, um, pass every class with 70% or higher, you maintain 95% attendance over the two years, then you get what's called Transport Canada accreditation. That's 18 months towards your AME license, which is four years, 48 months. So if you can also work in the summer on your co-op and get another two to three months experience, mm -hmm. you're leaving school with almost 21 months uh, experience towards your AME license. So you get your AME license a little bit faster. Um, the reason we started it was because so many employers were saying, we can't find people, we can't find people, we can't. So we were hoping that uh, they would be able to hire the first year students, mm -hmm. co-op, and then everybody wins, right? The employer gets some help during the summer, the students get some experience, and then the goal would be if everything works out good, then uh, they'd have a job lined up for when they graduate. How a student should prepare uh, him or herself for this program? I think, well, the English, that's the one thing we do notice with some of the international students is <clears throat> the comprehension of English, right? So mm -hmm. um, they struggle, we struggle trying to understand them, and they probably struggle with us. It's a... Um, it's a technical program with lots of technical terms. So it's not just simple English, right? So that we've seen over the years that does cause some issues. Um, to be prepared, well, like I said earlier, the you need 70% in every class. So that includes a math class. So we have a Transport Canada that tells us the curriculum and math is part of it. So that's one of the areas where some of the students struggle. Do you think there is age requirement for entering this program? I don't know if there's a minimum age to get into college, but usually you've left high school. So yeah, you're probably around that 17, 18 year mark. To get your AME license, I think it's, if I remember correctly, it's 21 mm -hmm. is the minimum age. But if you're 18 when you start college, it's a four year process. So you're going to be 21 by the time you get it. So Every year it's different. So you mentioned before the MLI license, sorry if I mispronounce. Can you please explain what is th this license? Yeah, it's an aircraft maintenance engineer license, so AME license. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what you would get for in Canada here. So you'd have to, you have to go to school. So um, <clears throat> all aircraft maintenance programs in Canada, we follow the same rules. So it doesn't matter if you come to our school or one, one of the other ones. We follow the same curriculum, mm -hmm. teach it in different orders possibly, but we follow the same same curriculum. So once you do your school, you get 18 months towards your AME license, which is 48 months. You go get a job, you start working and it's uh, like an apprenticeship. So you have certain tasks that you have to complete. Mm -hmm. So you would complete those tasks. You have to fill out your own um, log book to say when you did the tasks, have somebody that's licensed sign for those tasks. And then when you get close to your time to get your license, you would take your log book to Transport Canada and you would submit it with an application and a fee. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the fee, 115 bucks or something. And um, they would review your log book to see if you've met the requirements to write there's one more test you have to write to get your AME license. So that you can do six months earlier than the four years. So just around 40 months, 42 months, somewhere in there. Transport Canada reviews it. They give you the go ahead. You can write the, it's called a, a Canadian Aviation Regulation Exam. So it's about all the regulations. Mm -hmm. in Canada. So if you pass that, then you just have to finish your 48 months. And once you get that, you get a nice little piece of paper, a card that says you're a licensed AME with a number.
Do you have girls in this program? Yeah, it's a small percentage. We do like right now we got uh, we got two in the first year group and we got two, two in the second year group, I think. Do you want to add anything to Ukrainian potential students? <laughs> um, I guess over the years, like when I went to school back in those days, like we did shop classes in high school and you were kind of on that pathway to do mechanically inclined things, whether it's aviation, carpentry, automotive, whatever. Um, nowadays, it's not, not the same, right? So we get quite a few students that are coming from wherever they've come from without a huge mechanical background already. It makes it maybe a tiny bit tougher, um, but we start at the beginning. So um, if you don't know what a screwdriver is, that's where we start. This is a screwdriver, this is how you're gonna use it. If you already know that, then you're that much further ahead of those, those groups of students. But we do get some in here that do not have a huge mechanical background from their younger days or their high school days or, or whatever. Um, and they just have to work a tiny bit harder to, to, to get there, but mm -hmm. um, it's good for anybody. And I thank you so much really um, the, for your time and for your work and for, your, for all the information you shared.